Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans Evolve, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to solve one of the more annoying problems with using weight painting. So in the video last Friday we made this geometry node setup. Uh, there's a link in the description just so you can find that more easily. And the video goes through how to set this up, what it does and explains it in more detail. But in essence, if I come into weight painting, I've set this up so that I can draw on this and it's going to add in objects. In this instance, some scattered rocks. So this is really helpful for things like this where we've got our building. We can add in more debris and things like that where the building is and less as it's further away, which obviously is going to make a much nicer looking effect and is going to be a much quicker way than placing these manually, which is obviously really annoying and tedious. But there's a big problem with using weight painting this way, or maybe not a problem, maybe more a limitation would be a better word. So let's have a look at what that problem is, and then we can have a look at the way that I've come up with solving it, or at least getting around it. If you want to skip past any of those bits, then there's the timings in the chapters, so you can sort of skip forward and back as much as you want. But let's start with going through the problem. So what I'm going to do is shift and D and bring that over to the side, because realistically, this is probably not where you're going to have one of these buildings. I mean, maybe if it's a really ruined location, you're going to have something like this. But most of the time when I'm modeling things like this, I want them on a urban environment. So if I just bring this plane over here, let's sort of scale it up there and then let's S on the X. I'm going to make a quick sort of urban environment. Let's apply the scale and go into edge mode, control and R, and then let's do something like that, and then control and R there maybe. And I'm going to go into face mode and then A to select all of those faces, I to inset, and then hit I again so it does it individually, and we can make just a really quick version of some tiles if we just E and extrude those out. So there we go, we've got that sorted. And if we want to, we can copy the geometry node set over to here. So I'm gonna go there, there, control and C. If you don't have this copy attributes menu, you just go to edit, preferences, copy, and it's there. So click that on, save your preferences. So once you've got that, you can control and C. Notice you click on the one you want to copy from last because you can copy to multiple things. And we're just going to copy our modifiers. And then we've now got this here. Let's individualize that and we're going to need to come over here and set this up so we can do our weight painting. So that was all explained in the last video, how you set this up. Again, have a look at that if you want to. But if I go into weight painting and then try and do this, it doesn't work. And let's, again, it's not I've done it wrong. It just doesn't work. If I do it over here, it will suddenly work. But only if I do it there, not here near where the building is. So that's really annoying. So why doesn't this work? Let's look at that first. So if I go into vertex mode, you can see that what weight painting actually does is it works off a vertex group. It is adding weight to the individual vertices, which is why when I started doing it here, where there are vertices, it started to work. But when I was doing it on this edge, it didn't work. Whereas over here on this object, we've got lots and lots of vertices to add our weight painting on. And well, there are simple solutions to this. We could subdivide this a load of times and then it will work. But we're doing hard surface modeling. We don't want to have to subdivide everything a load of times. And sometimes subdividing isn't gonna work perfectly because sometimes we work with engons and it would just be a real pain to have that limitation. So we need another way of dealing with this. So what I'm gonna do is come to this and I'm gonna get rid of that geometry nodes because it doesn't work. And let's talk through how to solve this. Now I will say this is a bit of a cheat but it does work really nicely. And the most important thing about this is you can actually start using this for a lot of other things as well. I might talk about that in another video where you can do some really cool stuff with this. And this was actually how I originally came up with this. I wasn't trying to add rubble, I was trying to do something else. So what we're actually gonna do is create another object, do the weight painting on that, and then transfer the scatter over to this. So what we're gonna do is shift and A, mesh it, and I'm gonna bring the plane, and I'm gonna G to bring that up there, and then that's S to scale that up load, something like that. It could be bigger than the thing that you want it to work on, it could be smaller. Basically, you've got freedom to do this relatively quickly and lazily, as long as you've got it approximately correct, or at least for the area you want the scatter to go on in this instance. I'm gonna apply the scale, and then we've got that here, and what we're gonna to have to do is go into edge mode, and I'm gonna try and make this into sort of squares, so I'm gonna control R to about there to add some edge loops and then I'm going to A to select all, control and E and I'm going to subdivide this like, I don't know, a hundred times so we've got a lot of vertices. And this is where this works because 
We're adding all the vertices to this very simple object, which is not going to cause our computer any problems or slow it down. And we know that there's not going to be any issues here because there's no engons. We're not doing it to this object here, which we want to keep, for the better word, cleaner. Now from this point, it's pretty much the same setup with one major difference. We're going to talk through this and I'm mostly going to focus on the major difference. And I'm going to do this in a bit of a different order. And I'm not explaining every single stage because, well, I've already done that when I did the video for this. So again, do have a look at that video if you haven't looked at that one. But there will be enough for you to follow this along and I will show the full geometry node setup at the end. So we need a new geometry node setup. So let's come there. And we're going to start in exactly the same way we did with the other one. We want to add some points to this face and then we're going to instance on them. So let's go into the modifier so we can see what we've got there. We will come back to the weight painting in a second and we're going to control an A and I'm going to add in a distribute points on face. So that's coming in there and then we lose our face, which we're going to want to see. So I'm just going to shift an A, add in a join geometry. Because if we don't see our plane, it's going to make it very difficult to weight paint on. So we've got that there. We're going to change our distribute on face from random to Poisson disk. And that allows us to still set a density factor, which is really important. But also we can set a minimum distance so that our objects aren't too close together. And we can change that as we want. Let's put that distance minimum into our group input so that it's over here. And then this is the important bit. We don't want it to be using our density factor. We want it to be using our weight painting. So I'm going to drag my density factor into there. And that's now there. And I want to click that so that's now gone. Then we're going to set up a vertex group. So I'm going to come down here, click new, and we can name this whatever we want. So point dist for where we're going to put our points. But this can be whatever you want it to be. Then we're going to come back to our modifier, click there, and we've got our point dist. So we've got it working. And we can do what we did before, where we go into object mode, weight paint, and I can just do that. And you can see we're adding our points. And these points can be whatever we want. And as it gets more red, it gets more points up to the limit of being within whatever our minimum distance is. So we can add more or add less. And we can do that however we want. Back into object mode, and we've got those points. And just as a side note, what that means is that I can come to the top here, Shift and Z, so I can see an X-ray mode. And you can do this really easily, so you can trace around things if you want to have those objects more on the side and then less further away. In fact, let's go to weight paint, and I'm just going to add a few more. You'll see it gives this nice X-ray mode, but it still shows you the colors. Right, out of X-ray mode, and let's start fiddling around with this. So what we need to do is we need to get these points onto this object. Now let's give this object a name to make it easier. At the moment it's just called plane one, F2. And let's call this target object, because this is what we're gonna be targeting and this relates to the name that we're gonna use in a second. Then I'm gonna come in here and I want to basically shoot these points directly downwards onto this plane. And there is a node for that. It is called the Raycast node. And I love the Raycast node. It does a lot of really fun things. What we need to do is we need to set up a target. Our target geometry is going to be this plane. So let's get target object, drag it in here, and we're going to move that geometry to the target geometry. Now, what that means is things from this are now shooting down at this, but we can't see it and it isn't doing anything. It's just shooting everything downwards. And the reason it's shooting it downwards is because we've got this set at minus one. So what that means is that's the X, that's the Y, that's the Z, and we've got it going minus one because, well, our gimbal shows us, if I come over here, that this Z is positive that way, it's negative down. So we've got our negative Z. If you wanted this going upwards, you'd put one there, or in the X and Y and so on. So now this is all shooting down, but it's not doing anything with it. It's just giving us lots of information. It's giving information of what is being hit, the hit position, the hit normal, the distance that it's going, and the attributes. And you can drag certain attributes out of it. The other thing I should say is that we do have a ray length here. If you find this isn't working, then, well, it's going a certain distance, and you might need to put that up because it says how far it will go in this direction. So what we need to do is tell these points where to go. So we're going to use a set position just there. And we need to set it to a position. So we just move this hit position to the position. And now it's all gone. And it's all gone because at the moment we haven't clicked relative. So you come to the object info where your target is, click relative. And now it's shot down onto here. It's that easy. Now from this point on, anything that I do on this, Let's go into weight painting again. 
anything I do here will shoot down onto the bottom. Let's move these out of the way and we're just gonna effectively do what we did for the other one. We just want an instance on points, put that into there, and then we want to select our instance, which is gonna be our rocks collection. Put that into our instance, pick an instance, and separate and reset the children. And then if we want these to be scattered around, notice they're on the same direction at the moment, we can use these rotation and scale values to put in a random value, change that to a vector, that goes in the rotation, and then we want another one where we're gonna put it, oops. Then we want another one into the scale, but we only want this going up to, well, I mean, you could leave it at that, but I'm gonna to go to 0 0.25 I don't know, two five to have it up to a quarter of the size. You can go whatever size you want. And at this point, this is working. You've got everything going on over here, adds to your points on there. And what's the most important thing about this is that this geometry, the bit that we want to end this on, is going to be really clean. Now, I will add, this has some great additional potentials because as opposed to our other method, this here where we've got our ray cast and then we set our position, it sets our position and then we can still fiddle around with it. So for example, if we decide that we want these bits to be slightly higher up, I can come to my offset where it's using the ray cast hit, but I can say, well, add a little bit in the Z. So go a little bit higher if you want to, or go a little bit further down. So you can do that. The other thing that you can do, which is really cool, is that you can press G on the plane and move the plane around and everything will move with it, which is really fun, just because it means that you can change and tweak as you want. Do note that if you go off, everything just disappears. The other thing I will say is that if you hit any of the vertices right on the edge, it seems to make one sort of in the middle that it doesn't like, but that's not really a problem. Uh, it's just a bit of an oddity that I seem to have found. So once you've done that and you're happy with it, you just need to realize your instances. Again, with the previous one, we set that up as a switch so you can turn it on and off and just use that setup. So that's up to you if you do that. Bring that in there and now they are real and you can't change your weight painting at that point. Your weight painting is done, but you can always just hold Alt and drag that out, do some more weight painting, or I should say that uses the Node Wrangler add-on to do that, otherwise you'll just need to delete it. So to press Alt and then left click and drag it out, that's Node Wrangler, just go to Edit and Preferences to find that. But you can always add something and then just drag that back in. And as soon as you're done, apply this and then just delete your plane and you've got everything there. So I'll just apply all, go into vertex mode, x-ray mode, delete all of those, and you're set. So I think quite an elegant solution to a bit of an annoying limitation there. So there we go, there's the geometry node set up for that. Let's make this a little bit neater so it's easier to see. So you can copy this, for example, I'm gonna put the rocks up to there so that you can select everything over there. And you could do that with the random values as well. And if you wanted to, you could use the switch like the other version, but that's entirely up to you. But this is the basis of what we're doing here. So. Feel free to copy that. If you don't want to bother copying it, you want to just get it really quickly to use it. This is going to be up on the Patreon, so you can just grab that off the Patreon and copy it over to a new plane to be able to use. And I'm going to be setting this up personally as an asset, so I can just drag that geometry node setup in if I ever want to use that. And I've got how to set geometry nodes up as an asset in the video in the description if you want to check that out because it obviously it makes life a lot quicker to not have to set this up each time. If you found that useful, please do hit the like button. It really helps to get YouTube to share the channel around. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then do head on over to that Patreon where you get these videos ahead of time, advert free. So there's already gonna be two more videos up and you get other funky things as well. Have a great day, guys.